Hello, playback people. All right, Stochastic, here we go. It's your old pal Emac coming to you on a Saturday night here. We've got a little basketball. We've got a little March Madness. We've got a little NBA March Madness. We're brought to you by Sleeper here, but don't snooze on their deal. $500 deposit match. More on that later. Mr. Ehrenberg, we've had a couple uh, a couple tweaks to the slate since we talked about it this morning. Yeah, so uh, most notably, which we talked about this morning, is that, and uh, by the way, apologies to Emac because he's having audio issues, so it appears <laughs> that I am yelling at him. That is not going to be the case for anybody else who's listening, but uh, Emac has got the volume turned all the way up, apparently, and can't figure out how to turn it down. So I'm going to try to not blow out Emac's eardrums, or what's, what's left of him at his advanced age, so... Uh, Emac, apologies in advance. I am not shouting at you. I'm trying to talk reasonably, whatever your volume settings are. I can't control them on my own end. Uh, but yeah, the biggest thing is the Boston Celtics. Cause when you and I did the show this morning, I was looking at the NBA injury report and pointed out like we could make some assumptions on who might be in or out for the Celtics, but there was no officially injury report. And since then we have found out Kristaps Porzingis is out. Drew Holiday is out. Jalen Brown is out. We've got Al Horford questionable and Jason Tatum questionable as well. So this could be a spot with just a crazy amount of value. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's just going to be one of those here that uh, we'll, we'll deal with it. There are um, six games tonight. There's a seven o'clock game, just one. That's uh, Sacramento and Orlando. There is a 7.30 game, Charlotte and Atlanta. And we've got all the injury news for both of those games. It's that uh, four game set that's going tipping off at eight o'clock because both sides have elected to not go with the 10 o'clock game. So I kind of think um, I'm going to skip this first game because the only thing really interesting in it is Caleb Houston starting. And I don't know that it's all that interesting uh, for me. And then we've got the Kings going in a tougher matchup, three games and four nights for them. Uh, so it's, uh, it's just a tough situation, uh, on both sides or well, not on both sides, but Orlando mostly healthy leads to plenty of players in their rotation. So I think I'm going to skip this first one, which means should I pull a Lindquist? Should I try to play three sites tonight? I think I'll just stick with two. Well, you're usually the, even probably more so than Eric, you're usually the the king of playing multiple sites, multiple sports. Usually we're doing this and you're like, hey, it's the League of Legends late night afternoon super swap turbo slate. And and it's like, hey, you got to get my lineups up. So I'm like, all right, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even know this thing existed. And you're like, yeah, this is my eighth slate of this that I'm playing today. So uh, you even more so than, than Lindquist, it must be an Eric thing are usually all over the different slates, the different sites, the different contests and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, you're just playing, I assume, if I had to make an educated guess, what, Yahoo and DraftKings? Yahoo and DraftKings at this okay. point. I just make one one lineup on Yahoo usually. Last night I did too. Um, I'll play more for baseball, but when, when on, on air, it's a little tough to uh, do that. But uh, I have played college basketball today. I have played golf. I have played uh, na double NASCAR slate for the uh, trucks and for... Uh, whatever the, the, they're calling the non-cup race these days. Uh, let's see, uh, League of Legends played that, played uh, CSGO or CSGO or whatever. Whatever They've changed the name of that now because it's not global offensive, I don't think, anymore. Yeah, I've done a lot. Oh, Madden Sims. I'm getting the crowns. I'm almost up to 3.1 million, Greg. If I if I cash in all my, my 100,000 crowns I got for uh, college basketball, I will be well over 3.1 million. So well, what am I going to do with those? I don't know yet, but uh, I will be having fun with them. I will be having so, fun with them. I think you have more crowns saved up than me then. because So I spent my crowns at the holidays. But what am I up to now? Yeah, I'm at 1.8 million crowns. So I'm, I'm building my way back up. But yeah, you've got a lot more of them than I got there. I got well, and I I did I did not spend mine over the holidays because they didn't mm. do that glorious de deal where I got eight thousand dollars last year in Amazon uh, gift cards. But uh, let's uh, let's keep moving on uh, today's slate here. We'll kind of talk guards. Uh, we'll talk forwards. There will be a boatload of news coming in. I uh, suspect that'll start to trickle in in about twenty four minutes when the next NBA injury report um, uh, occurs here. But uh, key things we want to know. Uh, that Atlanta Charlotte game, uh, we have all the information for that. Uh, the only real moving parts is uh, Anyeko Kongwu is out. He had returned from a nine nine game ab or a 
I think it was seven game absence. Uh, in any event, he's out tonight. That will probably lead to DeAndre Hunter getting another spot start. That's the only part we don't know is the starting lineups there. Um, Charlotte is going to be without Bryce McGowan's. Uh, they're still without Ball, Martin, uh, Curry, etc. Toronto and Washington. Uh, we have some moving parts here. Uh, DeJounte uh, Porter is now out for personal reasons. We had talked about him this morning as an intriguing option. Gary Trent is in for Toronto. He had missed um, uh, at least one of the last two games. RJ Barrett is still away and from the team for personal reasons. Uh, there was a death in the family. Emmanuel quickly away from the team for personal reasons. On the Washington side, they have Marvin Bagley back. He did miss the last nine games with a back issue. Jordan Poole questionable, but we know Tyus Jones and, and Eugene Omarui are out. Um, we'll wait and see what we get with Boston. And then that's really it. John Collins is the wild card in uh, the Utah-Houston game. Uh, otherwise, we know Jordan Clarkson's missing a fifth game with his groin issue. And then Lori Markin and uh, asset management. I'm going to make that phrase uh, popular with at least myself, Craig. That's it. Well, there we go. Yeah, as long as it's popular. If you have anybody's questions for us as well, don't forget to at me in the Discord channel. If you're a stochastic sub, one of the perks of it is that you do get access to our Discord channel. You could ask myself or anybody else questions whenever you want. You could sign up for any of those using the links that we have below. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people are saying that the audio is no good. Is the audio no good on my side, on Emacs side, on both sides? Because uh, it sounds fine to me. For yourself, Emac, is it sounding okay? It's... It, 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 yes, it's loud and clear. Uh, aside from <laughs> aside from it being being extra loud, no, it it does seem fine. Uh, I haven't adjusted any of my input, so that should be okay. I was just trying to tweak my audio output, um, and I'm and I'm only doing the audio, not the microphone stuff. I have learned enough of these uh, little sub uh, menus here, so so sure uh, I don't think this is an issue with us because people in playback are saying it's fine in playback. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a YouTube issue. That's my, be that's my best guess right here. Also, Emac kind of uh, related to sound issues is I thought I was going to have to sneeze at the top of the show. And then I'm looking, I'm like, oh my God, I might, Emac's ears might explode if I sneeze. <laughs> and then the other part of it too that makes it complicated is because then I realized too, like normally if you're doing shows, it's kind of like a cough button, you can just mute yourself. But then it's like, oh my God, I have to mute myself really quickly in both playback and YouTube uh, or, or Zoom so it doesn't go out over YouTube. But yeah, guys, uh, apologies. There's nothing that we could do about it. It's fine on our end. It's a YouTube issue. If you guys do want to jump into playback, uh, it seems like the guys in playback are saying that it's it's fine on playback, but just choppy on YouTube. But uh, I'm nothing. I'm gonna try to run some right uh, tests, see if I can get it fixed. But I think it's YouTube too. Yeah. So apologies, apologies, guys. We did get a question here from uh, Sniffs one two three four. He says to him the audio sounds fine. Then he wants to know how do we feel about the centers for Toronto tonight? And he wants to know do they start our guy uh, Muhammad Gooey? So if we go ahead and look at Toronto for today, and by the way, I'm, I'm, I have the stream pulled up on YouTube just to check it out. It does look like it's lagging out uh, a good amount. As far as my best guess for the Raptors starting lineup, I think we're going to see Toronto go Brown, Trent, Dick, Agbaji, and Olenek. I think we're going to see that starting five again. And then as far as the exposures that I have to some of these Toronto players, because I do have a, a fresh run done here. Let's see. Toronto players. Yeah, I don't have anybody that's like super high priority for me. I will say that uh, Mohamedou Gooey is uh, somebody who I view as a viable contrarian option. He's only projected for sub 10% ownership and about double the field. So not somebody I'm going to be playing like 40 or 50% of lineups, but it's single digit ownership. I do have him in close to 20% of my lineups. So uh, don't think he's a, don't think he's a terrible punt at all. As of now, uh, Emac, do you have, do you have your uh, lineups built out? And is uh, is a uh, Mo Mohamedou Goué, who I'm sure I'm not pronouncing his name right. I I, I was gonna say I'm doing my best, but I'm I'm doing like uh, seven out of ten. My best effort to pronounce his last name. Uh, is that somebody you're gonna view yourself getting to Emac? No, because I have him listed as out. I'm trying to source this. Uh, so uh, there's different. Um, Multiple Mohamedou Gueys or Maham Mohammed. So there's there's Mohammed Gueye and there's Mohamedou Gueye. 
<laughs> one one of them is on the Toronto Raptors. The other one is on the Atlanta Hawks. Oh, I'm looking for the Atlanta Hawks chap, shall we say. Okay, okay. Then yes, uh, I'm suspecting he will come in. I'm a little bit scarred from the not getting enough Wiseman and Duop Reed not uh, keeping up with Wiseman last night. So cheap centers, you know, never again, except they're the best plays in DFS. <laughs> so, uh, but yes, I, I suspect I will be getting him. I'm, 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 I'm going to uh, be running my lineups uh, shortly here so I can play along as well, because I don't have to worry about the panic of uploading because I'm probably going to be skipping this first game, as I said. So yes, um, that will be someone that does come in to my plans. Surprisingly much, much to, uh, I don't want to say my chagrin, my dismay. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, what do we say? It's spring basketball. It's just, yeah, people it's... in the chat, they keep uh, the calling them names in there. They're calling them names. They're trying to tell me how to, they're trying to tell me how to pronounce his last name. What is the, the consensus? Uh, the consensus is that it is that he is gay, but like that's how his name is pronounced. Uh, I, I could be, I could be being had by the YouTube chat right now, Emac. Somehow I think they're they're probably correct on this one. It's like Omar Omar Rui. It's it's some of these names are just best. Uh, oh yeah, it's uh, gay. G a y is the pronunciation. So, so why don't they spell it that way? This right now I've got this, now I've got a bone to pick. It's got to be one of those those uh, French uh, uh, colonial things or French. Well, colonial, listen, colonial. I mean I'm not a fan of the it's French. Like, I'm not calling them names. Guy is gay. In French, right? So it's it's Guy Fox or Fox, not uh, Guy Fox, like we say it here. So that must be it. So Muhammad Gay, there you go. All right, and and then the other one's Muhammadu Gay. Correct. This is but, this is so, making, uh, me, so anyway, this is making to, me happy, Greg. Just See what to I make there? people to make people less confused, there is a Muhammad Gay. There's a Muhammadu Gay on the slate. And I swear, Chad, if, if you're if you're bullshitting me on how his last name is pronounced, then you win. All right. That, that, not... Then you got then you guys have simply won. But the one that we are talking about liking as a potential contrarian option is Mohamedou Gay from the Toronto Raptors. And once again, not like a crazy amount of exposure. If you guys are playing one, two, three lineups, not somebody to roster, but for me, playing 150 lineups, I do have him in uh 16% of my lineups is the number that I have at the moment. So I'm just, I'm looking, he's played what a grand total of about 30 minutes tops in the NBA. It's wild that there's, there's two guys, similar name, not related. It's, it's uh pretty crazy. Uh, so Muhammad are you sure Gay, they're not related? Well, it doesn't, I, I'm looking, it doesn't have the little re I'm on basketball uh, reference. So usually it has a little hyperlink that says brother, cousin, dad, you know, whatever it is. Um, or father, whatever it is. So th they're not linked to each other in this. I could could be wrong. But Muhammadu is 26, almost 26. He grew up in Staten Island, New York. Uh, and if we look at um, Muhammad Gay, he grew up in Dakar, Senegal. So I'm guessing that unless it's a brother from another mother situation here, they definitely are not related. Still pretty well, wild. Listen, if I make too many jokes about this, I'm going to get myself in trouble. So we'll move on to the next question that we got here in Discord. It is from VA Prince. Prince is uh, confirming that Josh said his name is pronounced gay. All right. So we got Nora. By the way, if, if Prince tells us this, it's got to be absolute fact. There's no way that there's anything but the best information coming from Prince in chat. And uh, then we've got some super chats here as well, Emac, that we could start okay. hitting on if you saw those come across. Yes, I'm I'm just getting up all, all the windows here now, but I do have uh, YouTube up. So let's take a quick peek here. Oh, we've got three of them lined up here. Uh, Chris Williams did gift us out five uh, DFS uh, or stochastic YouTube memberships here. So shout out to our favorite Apple guy. Cully Potts Poston says, I've got, ooh, I've got one seat in that F. BWC and it's no late swap. So I'm guessing that's the fantasy basketball world championships, no late swaps. How would you play the Celtics and part two oh, man. To, to Wemby or not Wemby? Man, this is, I'll be honest. This is probably, I mean, like why would it be anything but honest? Pe people say that and I, it's kind of like a turn of phrase. It's very dumb to say, cause it implies that there's other things you say. It's like, look, to be honest. All right. So here, 
my thought here, first, Coley Poston, good luck. Second, I think this is the most difficult question we've ever been asked on a show because this is super tricky to navigate because for me, playing the regular DFS slates, I'm telling you what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be doing an ROI boost to, to Tatum, and then I'm going to be playing a bunch of them just before the slate starts. And if something happens or it gets ruled out, I'll have a ton of flexibility to make late swaps. But I understand that's not an available option to you. Boy, I, I wouldn't want to take the chance. I wouldn't want to take the chance and play Tatum when he's listed as questionable. You could have your entire fantasy based basketball world classic uh, lineup go to shit if he doesn't play. It is so risky. You have to have some balls. On. Well, hopefully, for your sake, we'll get the update before the slate starts. But I don't know that's coming in the next hour. So here's here's what I think you should do with the Boston Celtics situation, right? I wouldn't play Jason Tatum. I wouldn't play Al Horford unless we get, once again, that news before lock. Jalen Brown's out. Drew Holiday's out. Kristaps Sporzingis is out. It's very clear that Jason Tatum, if he is confirmed in in the next 42 minutes, I just want to put this out there so that you have this information. If he does play, absolutely play Jason Tatum in your lineup. But if he's still questionable heading into lock, I think you should be playing Derek White because Derek White would just be in an in, in absolutely perfect situation should Horford and Tatum both get rolled out. So I would say play Derek White is the Celtics guy that you want to be getting to. And then as far as Wemby, let's see, what is my current exposure to Wemby? Would he be... I would say not not to roster Wemby. Wemby's not somebody who's like a core play for me on the slate. I'm very slightly overweight to him at the moment. And once again, apologies, Emac. Because uh, no, 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 I'm I'm good. <laughs> I, I found the sub thing. I had to open the Zoom app. It was set to 100. Great. Oh, all right. Well, 100. Yeah, turn that down to 69. You'll get better. Uh, you'll get you'll get better better noise going into your eardrums there. Uh, so as far as the pay up option that I'd want to get to. I'd be most inclined to go to DeJounte Murray and Derek White. Uh, and I also think you should be playing Peyton Pritchard from the Boston Celtics, Coley Boston. So no Tatum unless he's confirmed in in the next 40 minutes. I think you want to play Peyton Pritchard. You want to play Derek White. And I would say no Wemby for that lineup. Yeah, and I would say um, in this contest, the, there may be, if we don't have news, some of the people that have multiple entries are likely to play Tatum, but they'll probably be the only ones um, on that. And um, uh, also, just, just kind of related to that, because it's uh, also worth bringing up on this point where uh, Norm Talbot in the chat had said, no, Hauser, not for this, because the only scenario that I would want to play Hauser is if Tatum is ruled out or if he's confirmed starting. I don't want to play Hauser if we find out Tatum's in and, and Hauser's coming off the bench. And keep in mind, too, I'm speaking specifically to Coley Poston's question. He's going to be in uh, the FBWC today, and there is no late swap for that. So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't play him unless we had confirmation that Tatum is out and Hauser's starting. So good luck today, Coley Poston. I hope my information was helpful to you. Uh, that that is a super tricky situation to navigate. Yeah, who's who's your top play tonight? How, or I should say, as, as you're running through your sims, how much uh, Dejounte Murray? You know, you know, I I was uh, a fan of his this morning. He ended up as the cover um, player on the article for DFS Building Blocks. I wrote him up. I wrote uh, Booker up as a potential counterpoint uh or a, a pivot you could play them both together though um, you're gonna the phoenix guys didn't, weren't really popping up this afternoon uh into lineups here but what are we seeing tonight is it is it going to be a Dejounte murray yeah so i like Dejounte murray a pretty good amount overall my favorite pay up option right now is jason tatum and then also okay. people who are wondering like all right well this is kind of what the celtics have been doing they've been alternating rest days between jason tatum and jalen brown the difference, though, is that Tatum has missed two of the last three games, and I think he's actually dealing with an injury. So that's what makes this a little bit different. If Tatum sits, it wouldn't just be the normal rest. He's actually dealing with an ankle injury at the moment, so it would be a little bit different of a scenario. All right. Uh, a couple items here. We did get John Collins in, so yep. that is new. Uh, we've got uh, several more uh, Super Chats here. So uh, Anthony um, is asking, what are the best two plays at point guard? And the best two plays at power forward. Uh, I think he's asking best projected. Thank you. So. 
Um, so the question, let me just pull it up so I could read it right here. Okay. So the question that we are getting here is from Deontay Smith. And oh no, the one you had asked was uh, Anthony. the Anthony, so right Anthony uh, Maniachi question. All right. Best two plays at point guard, best two plays at power forward, best projected. Okay. So let me start at point guard then. Here are the point guards that I currently have the most of in my lineups and uh, two guys who we just mentioned before as well. So the two point guards I have the most of are Peyton Pritchard and Derek White. As far as the overall top projected point guard, not even close. It's DeJounte Murray. I'm also overweight to the field on Murray. But in terms of the players I actually have the most of in my player pool right now, it is Peyton Pritchard and Derek White. And also for anybody who's using the stochastic Sims, give ROI boost to all of the relevant Boston Celtics players. Give yourself as much flexibility to either play these guys or swap as you possibly can. Uh, as far as the two best plays at power forward, right power forward the two power forwards i have the most exposure to at the moment are jason tatum and bruno fernando as far as the power forward that's projected for the most fantasy points also not remotely close jason tatum by a landslide over everybody else with power forward eligibility at the moment yep and that makes sense and for those wondering hey why why bruno fernando well partly because uh okong was out but they're actually they are running rather thin uh, up and down the entire Atlanta roster. And then the other thing that's kind of interesting is you can get Bruno at power forward on both yep. DraftKings and FanDuel. That's a new, uh, new-ish twist there uh, uh, that we have. So it's and, less way, about... An incorrect one for no reason. There is zero reason that Bruno Fernando is power forward eligibility, but we'll take advantage of it over on DraftKings for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And by the, by the way, not exclusive to to DraftKings. FanDuel has him at, at uh, power forward and center mm -hmm. eligibility as well. I'm kind of interested here. I'm going to pull up. Maybe I'm, I'm wrong here. I'm going to pull up what percentage of his minutes he's played at each position. And we'll see what the uh, information is here. I'm going to have you guess before I look it up, Emath. What percentage of minutes do you believe Bruno Fernando has played at center this year? What percentage of minutes has he played at power forward? 11% uh, power forward, 89% at center. All right. So this is going to make this even more hilarious. He's can played 100% of his minutes at center this year, 0% of his minutes at power forward. And the last time he played any minutes at all at power forward was 2021. It was the last time he played a single minute at power forward. But for whatever reason, DraftKings and FanDuel at the same time decided this guy needs to be a power forward on our sites. <laughs> Good times. Good times. Uh, all righty. A couple more questions coming in. Oh, did you hit the, you, yeah, you did hit the power forward there. Yeah. Um, so, um, uh, so Rad M is asking, is it a Reggie Jackson day? Now the key thing to remember, everybody panic. Oh my, I haven't heard anybody talk about Reggie Jackson. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, a good question. I should say, uh, that, but that is the late game. That is the, uh, Denver yeah, Portland so game. Oh, go ahead. He's not on this, so don't leave us another super chat, RA DM. Just throw this into the YouTube chat for what purpose, right? Because and the reason I'm asking that he's not on the DraftKings or the FanDuel main slate. So what are are you playing Showdown? Show, yeah, play play Reggie Jackson and Showdown. But is there a different slate that I'm maybe so not the thinking DraftKings about does DraftKings does have a the eight o'clock games and the last game of the night, and Yahoo is playing all of them or has all of them so on their main slate, so. Uh, it could be a Yahoo question, but I would say, yeah, because I'm um, just, just quickly throwing that out since yes, both, uh, no, uh, no kitsch, <laughs> no kitsch and Burry are out along with Zeke Nage, uh, and then Denver or probably, uh, Portland is countering with unlikely to play Deandre and Jeremy Grant. And then of course, Sharp, Simmons, Bogdanovich or not, uh, not Bog uh, Brogdon, a uh, variety of people are still out for Portland. So Denver still favored by 10. Yes, I would say uh, in that late game, Christian Brown, Brown uh, is good and Reggie um, Jackson and then, of course, uh, Michael Porter Jr. are the likely scoring guys. So there we go. Yeah. Uh, so once again, RADM, just uh, throw into the chat whatever it is that the site or the slate you're playing on. Don't leave another super chat. Just throw into the chat what it is that you are looking at because Reggie Jackson, if you're playing showdown, play him. If you're looking at that uh, late slate, I can run lineups for that really quick. But Reggie Jackson is, uh, we have Reggie Jackson for the five game slate, Mac. Have you seen what we have his projected ownership for, for that slate? I just pulled no, it up. No, but it better be 97%. It is 97%. So okay. 
Uh, is it a Reggie Jackson night? If you're playing that five game late slate, yeah. I mean, project for 97% ownership, it, it is. <laughs> I don't think we ever hit 100. 97 is like the highest I've ever seen in in most things here. I mean, so he's that's... he's $3,300 on DraftKings with Jamal Murray and Jokic out. Yeah. Um, so do, 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 uh, Deonta Smith says, Hey, what's the best way to set up the contest generator as far as contest archetype and percentage to first? I know you have a quick answer for this a quick ish answer. Yeah. So, uh, Deontay Smith, it depends which contest you're playing in. So the purpose of the Sims tools we have on the site, it's not just to build and simulate the slate, but it's also it has some levers so that you could manipulate it to best have it give you results for the contest that you are playing. And so if you're playing the $15 contest that has 150 entries and is, what is it, 50K to first and a $200,000 prize pool, if you're playing that one, then you want the sim settings to be set on marquee. And then you also want it to be set on 25% to first because that is what the percentage to first is. So Deontay Smith, it depends which contest is you're playing on, what site it is. And uh, once again, you could either at me in Discord or just throw it into the YouTube chat and I'll tell you which settings you should put it on for the contest you're playing in. But I don't know what contest you're playing in just from reading your question here. So I need a little bit more information. There isn't a one size fits all answer. Yeah, and it's... Play around with it a little bit is one thing I have to say. But by the time you start putting in some of the ROI boosts, uh, if you start really uh, manipulating things, it it sort of puts that out the window once you start going on directly on players. Uh, but it, correct me if I'm wrong. It's more or less that's what mimics the field. That's what helps create the field, though, right? Is that uh, percentage to first and the 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 uh, type of contest. Uh, by the way, Tatum's in, Horford's in. Good news for Coley okay. Poston. Play, J play Jason Tatum today. There you go, Greg, uh, ahead on the news, which makes sense, you know, since you are a ninja, according to Deuce Trey. And he says, you know what? I need my favorite ninja, Greg, to talk about the fan duel plays. Sure. Uh, any just top plays at each position or anything more specific in his Why question? position, my ninja. Okay. That's what he says. All right. So I think he I'm wants to see at... you in black pajamas. Here we go. Hey, best best players at each position, guys. I'm getting the most exposure to over on Fanduel at point guard. That is Fred Van Vliet. I, th I I think Emac would be happy to know that's where we're leading off the Fanduel discussion. At shooting at shooting guard, that is Agbaji. Small forward, that is Grady Dick. Power forward, Jason Tatum, and now center Bruno Fernando as a guy to be rostering. Bruno Fernando, who has a price point of just forty two hundred dollars on Fanduel. And also for, once again, no reason at all, power forward and center eligibility. Hey, you got to love it. You got to love it. Uh, Tupelo Joe was says, uh, can you reprise that for DK? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So for DraftKings purposes, starting at point guard, the point guard I have the most exposure to on, on DraftKings is Peyton Pritchard. The shooting guard I have the most exposure to is Derek White. The small forward I have the most exposure to is Jason Tatum. The power forward I have the most exposure to is Bruno Fernando. The center I have the most exposure to behind Bruno Fernando, because once again, power forward and center eligibility, Clint Capella is the one I have the second most to. Now, here's a follow-up question that people are going to ask you, Matt. I've been doing this for a minute. I know what the next questions are before they get asked. It is going to be, can they play Bruno Fernando and Clint Capella in the same lineup? Yes. Here is why. It's, it's not a big slate. It's six games. So it's not like there's such an abundance of options that it's problematic. And also at their price points, particularly Bruno Fernando's, it's not an issue for me. Where this would be a problem is, let's say you had like the Clint Capella, Onyeko Kongu prices, where it might be like Clint Capella is, you know, maybe six. Well, let me look up actually. I can see what their exact prices are, uh, both a Kongu and Capella. But, you know, if you get these scenarios where it's like a, Capella is $6,200 and Okongu is $5,900. At those kind of salaries, I wouldn't want to play them in the same lineup. When you consider that we have Bruno Fernando priced at only $3,900 and he's a decent enough points from a fantasy producer, it's very viable to think there's a scenario where you could get something like, you know, 30 high 30s fantasy points out of Clint Capella, mid 20s fantasy points out of Bruno Fernando, and that would have each of them live to be in the winning lineup. All right. And what do you know? That's exactly what I said a little more succinctly. In the article there, the free one, the DFS building blocks, 
uh, article free every day on the Stochastic website. Um, we'll end up talking about Bruno Fernando again, but let's wait for a few more people to come in. So when you repeat that, uh, it, it will uh, resonate just a little bit more with more people. But let's take this moment to quickly talk about Sleeper because we have 28 minutes until lock. Sleeper is the presenting sponsor of the show. If you come in through the link in our uh, YouTube description here, I will get that dropped into the YouTube chat as well. Uh, you will get uh, up to a $500 deposit match on your first deposit. Uh, it is available on app. Uh, it is a lot of fun. You can craft your payouts up to 100x, 100 times uh, your payout. Uh, they do have some dynamic payouts um, as well as the ability to maneuver some of the some of the points uh, up or down that's going to affect those dynamic payouts. It's a lot of fun. They also have more stack categories. They've got triple doubles, double doubles. When we get into baseball, they got they're going to have home runs, triples, stolen bases, uh, etc. So it's pretty nifty uh, app that is there. And uh, pretty much every day there is going to be a free square if you're a new member who is joining. And then uh, four or five times a week they do some discounted picks throughout the day. You can spot those pretty easily on the app. Um, for that. But uh, the other thing I need to mention is a minimum $20 deposit is what it is going to ask you for, but put in that uh, 500 because if you can, because that comes out as a deposit bonus. Uh, let's see. Thanks for correctly saying my name, Greg Kills, home of Elvis. Who, who is, uh, whose name did I say right? Tupelo Joe. Oh, all right. Well, you were the one who said his name right, not me. Oh, well, there you go. I don't do it intentionally, but I certainly fuck up people's names all the time. So I'm posting and it's, it's, I mean, there's some, first off, a lot of the names aren't real, like, uh, the, not the, the Muhammad gay situation, <laughs> not that guy. That is a, a real name that really shouldn't even exist, but there's other people too, who it's, it'll be like, Hey, my YouTube handle, it is kicker of K hunts. And then Eric Lindquist will read that and he'll not realize that there's supposed to be a space between certain letters and words. And he says the wrong thing. So I, I do try to read the names and try to figure out what it is, and I'm wrong uh, more frequently than I like to be. It's difficult. All right. Well, Ace of Spades would like to pour you a bubbly beverage, and he is asking, what are the DK tiers for tonight? Sure. So pulling up DK tiers. So if we're looking at tiers for today, and let me see if anything has changed from earlier, uh, just that we've got Tatum ruled in here. Yeah, so... Uh, I, this was something that was going to be a little bit tricky for me before. I wasn't sure how to talk about the Jason Tatum situation. Now we know he's in. Cool. He's the guy to go to in tier one, Jason Tatum. Tier two for me, this is very tight. We've got De'Aaron Fox, Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, Jalen Brown, although he's been ruled out. So De'Aaron Fox for me in tier two, but all these guys are separated by three tenths of a fantasy point in our projections. Very, very close. Can't really make a mistake with any of them, but I'm going to go with De'Aaron Fox. Tier three, Kyle Kuzma. Tier four, Fred Van Vliet. Also, because he's the right answer, not because I'm trying to suck up T-Mac over here. And he's uh, the president of not only our country in 2024, but also the Fred Van Elite fan club. Tier five, that is Denny Obvia for me. And then tier six, Eamon Thompson. All righty. Uh, what was tier five? Was Obvia uh, and six, yes. Eamon Thompson. Okay. And uh, I also for... want to go and see um, uh, RADM says, okay. So I'm, I'm circling back to give the responses to some of those questions where we didn't have all the information for. So RIDM is saying he doesn't live in the U.S. He's just speaking generally and uh, says uh, sports betting and other sites that he have access to that don't remove late swap. Yes. So in that case, it, it is a Reggie Jackson. Night. He's going to play a much bigger role than he normally would with Jamal Murray and Jokic both out. And then uh, let's see, did Deonta, right, was that? What was the super chat we had before uh, that we, was? We got, we got from, his yeah, Deonta Smith. And it doesn't look like he said anything else in the YouTube chat that I could find. Oh, gotcha. You're following up on that. Uh, Debuff just came in with cash locks for DK. Sure. So let's go and back track to uh, the DraftKings side of things. Cat game locks. So you want to be playing uh, for sure Bruno Fernando over on DraftKings. You want to be playing Peyton Pritchard in cash games, Derek White, Jason Tatum, cash game lock now as well that he's in. I'd say those four guys here are cash game locks. Tatum, White, Pritchard, Bruno Fernando. Um, agreed. 
Uh, let's see. Okay. I think that got us through all of the super chats. Do we have anything coming in through Discord? We did get uh, the Josh Koji will play. Jordan Poole will play. Yusuf Nurkic. Uh, that was not a surprise that he's playing. He was just been dealing with a sore hip. Um, and then the Kings starting lineup is uh, Fox. You've got Keon Ellis with another spot start for uh, Kevin Herter. You've got Keegan Murray, Harrison Barnes, and Sabonis. Uh, in that one. And then a reminder for everybody um, that did not realize it, but there is um, uh, Gary Harris is out tonight. So we have Caleb Houston getting a spot start there for Orlando. I would not, not really interested in either Houston or um, Keontae Ellis in the going against each other, or I should say in the same matchup. Um, Let's see. Okay. I think that hits everything. Just quickly looking for any other outstanding news. We got the Boston starting lineup. We're just waiting for Toronto and Washington to see who uh, lands in there. And then we'll want to, of course, we should have Charlotte and Atlanta here pretty quickly. So there we go. Uh, anything? Oh, another super chat here. Uh, how many players do you use in a slate like today? We have 115 players what percentage of players do you have exposure to all righty so this is going to vary dramatically it is going to vary by what is going on throughout the day where pricing is the number of, of slates what the matchups are who's in who's out uh, so tonight boston's going to be heavily represented in, in contest as are as is atlanta if uh, those both both those rotations were uh, filled out and robust, we would probably be talking differently about Phoenix or Houston um, in in some of these situations here. So it's going to vary throughout the day. I I don't ever even look at what I'm doing um, when it comes to uh, overarching number of players that I'm playing. Um, I know sometimes people look at that to see how concentrated their lineups are, but it's it more or less takes into account you know what is your where are you with percentages and stuff? So I would not approach the game in that fashion. Um, if you do, you need to understand that right now, the only sport that is more heavily uh, uh, chalk, if you will, than uh, uh, NBA basketball is NBA playoff basketball. So uh, just to understand that's going to be far different than what we're experiencing in baseball, which starts on Thursday. Uh, anything you wanted to add on that? It's not, it's not something that matters. It, it, it seems to matter to people because we get this question all the time, but it's not something I ever think about how many players I have exposure to. It, it, just, it really doesn't matter. All right. Uh, Radham's asking uh, Super Chat. says, do you think Bagley will be on a minutes restriction tonight? Uh, says, I think he'd be great if he was not. Do I think Bag will be on a minutes restriction? Yes. So uh, also something that uh, came up on our strategy show this morning. Yes. So Marvin Bagley has not played since March 9th. And he was also dealing with a back injury, which is typically something that when people are out with back injuries, it's not like they're able to keep their conditioning up during their time away. So my expectation is that we're going to see low to mid 20s minutes out of Bagley. Regardless, if he starts or comes off the bench, I think it's what we're looking at mid 20s, mid to low 20s minutes. Yeah, and, and I think that's going to be fair even on the go forward for both for both those, as long as both those guys are healthy. Um, I think that's uh, what we will be expecting from Washington going forward. Uh, on a fun note here, I said, uh, uh, Michael Bern uh, Bernier says, uh, hey, friends, I'm good to go. Built my lineups. Good luck, everybody. Hey, we got 20 minutes left. <laughs> the James Wiseman news came out with about four minutes to go before lock last night. Tis the time of year where everybody needs to be nimble and ready to um, uh, pivot. A uh, uh, question here that I think is a good one. If Omer Yurt7 is out, does that really impact anything in a major way? A little bit. It's just one more uh, person that's not there at the center. It would make a bigger difference if um, Alperin Shingun was playing for Houston. Uh, they also have John Collins back. They've got Walker Kessler, uh, who can play plenty of minutes. Um, Yurtseven is is more or less, what does he play, Greg? Usually like 12 minutes a night or so um, in the standard rotation. So it, him be, him Because be John awesome. Collins is in seven status really doesn't matter. All right, uh, let's see. 
Okay, there we go. We got all that stuff taken care of. Anything fun on Discord? And we, of course, as soon as I say we've got it all taken care of, it's like somebody's cue to drop in yet another super chat. That's, that's how Jay, it always with goes. And, uh... super chat says last man in, uh, fifty eight hundred position does not matter. It's a DK utility. Uh, which uh, which super chat was this? Uh, it Jay. was from uh. J A Y. J just last man in fifty eight hundred utility. Correct. All right. I don't know why, but I I thought you had said more than just what that question is. But uh, either way, fifty eight hundred dollars in the utility spot. My best option there is going to be fifty eight hundred utility. Peyton Pritchard. There's probably a good chance you already have Peyton Pritchard in your lineup. So the next best option for me is Corey Kispert. Right. Um, hit that like button. Let's have some fun. Let's see if we can get a nice uh, round number here. I will be sending this link to Mama Mac. Uh, she hasn't watched as many shows, but she said she was very sad because after spending three months with me in Florida, she says she misses her her little boy who is not so little and not so young anymore. Uh, we have 234 likes. Let's see if we can push that on up. Real quick, I also wanted to remind you, in addition to that great deal at Sleeper, where you can get a $500 deposit match by going in through our um, uh, uh, promo code here, we do have uh, the Stochastic Data Bundle. We have separated that out from the uh, Max t uh, Sims package. You can still get $100 off uh, per month if you're using the Stochastic Avatar. So that is a good one. And then the lineup generator, big reminder there, we talk a lot about Sims, but the lineup generator is, as Josh likes to call it, Sims Lite. Uh, it is built on the exact same tools and platforms that we use for pretty much everything here from the boom bust tool to projections to leverage um, to all of that. Uh, it is a, a little bit easier on the pocketbook uh, and it, it works rather quickly. Uh, it's a lot of fun to use the lineup generator and we're seeing people win contests with it all of the time. It allow it cuts off bad lineups. You do have some flexibility. You can build out up to 20 at a time, maneuver them, change them, swap players in and out, put them into the holding pattern, and then you can hold up to 20, download them, upload that to your DFS side of choice. It's a pretty slick tool. I do like using it. Yeah, and then um, also something else to add about that is a lot of people have been winning uh, lately with it as well. I know that Lafayette had told me, which I brought up on this show, is uh, when he was doing our last Hall of Fame segment, we had it was... I think he said 30 people had won GPPs and credit either the Sims tool or the lineup generator in the last week. So, uh, yeah, lots of people have been winning. And if you guys want to get on board, just sign up using the link we have below. And also, any package you have when you sign up does get you Discord access as well. Uh, I see someone was asking, could anybody playing Yahoo, who is your center popping up? Is it going to be <laughs> uh, Jock Landale? Oh, uh, who can he be asking that question to? Uh, quickly, uh, Ke Kelly Olynyk is looking like a strong option. Uh, DeAndre Jordan, we didn't mention him when we were talking about Denver. We have seen him DNP in the past in weird situations, even with Zeke Nagy out and uh, and Jokic out. I would be terrified to play him unless he's in the starting lineup. Uh, so I don't um, I don't think I'll go that route. But I I, I do like um, Olynyk, and I think Jock Landale is adequate. Uh, do you want to put out? Yeah, you had a good caveat there. Uh, about Jock Landale from the earlier show and uh, that his la uh, two games ago, he benefited from not having Jabari. Yeah, so uh, last game, Jabari Smith got into just crazy foul game. trouble. So last game out, we saw a, a super high ceiling game out of Jock Landale, but Jabari Smith only played 22 minutes in that game due to foul trouble. He had three fouls and something like six minutes played in the first half of that game. So there was a, a great game for Jock Landau, which really did solidify his backup center role, but don't expect him to be playing more minutes regularly than Jabari Smith going forward. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, let's get uh, the old chat back up here and see what else is going on. Uh, let's see. Uh, big block, Landau. That's not, yeah, we I, do I, have I, a, a few questions that are in Discord, okay, so perfect. go ahead and answer those. Uh, question, uh, somebody asked about top plays at FanDuel, but we did go over that by position. Uh, Humble Inc. wants to know Capella or John Collins. I strongly prefer Capella to John Collins tonight. I would concur. Just going against that, Charlotte's uh, front court has been um, a, a profitable scenario for the majority of the season. 
And the next question that we have here is, uh, well, we got two people asked the same question here. So even though we did it, I think we should probably circle back on it. We had Mr. Cool Cam and Rico Rod both asked top FanDuel plays by position. So I will go back and read these off again. At point guard for me, Fred Van Vliet, shooting guard, Ogbaji, small forward, Grady Dick, power forward, Jason Tatum, center, Bruno Fernando over on FanDuel. Alrighty, I'm running another set of Sims myself here. Uh, I am skipping that first game, uh, but we will. Uh, I'm looking across the board. There's nobody at double digit ownership, um, and I'm comfortable uh, not going there as I try to figure some things out because I think there's better plays uh, across the board, even though we have um, most of our information at this point. It will just be a little easier to do this when I'm not on the show. That doesn't happen all the time. Uh, last night we had two games starting at uh, at tip. Um, and I'm already blanking on which game we all, oh, the Detroit game we all love. So this is not something you want to do regularly. It's only in certain situations where it buys you the extra half hour. And also for a uh, good question, because somebody had brought it up in a couple of different spots. So somebody, I saw somebody bring it up in playback chat. I saw somebody bring it up in Discord. I saw somebody bring it up in YouTube as well. Uh, as far as my boost, yeah. So I uh, undid my boosts for the Boston Celtics guys because we just have the information now. I don't have to pre-plan for what happens if Tatum's going to be in or out because we've already got that news. Here's what we are still waiting on for today. It is, uh, I believe, nothing of consequence. We have on the injury report now. Now, could weird shit pop up? Yeah, it's the NBA, of course. It could be weird starting lineups, things along those lines. But there's there's nobody that matters that's on the injury report. We got everything we need. All right. Uh, one player I see that's popping up for me that I will tamp down later. It's Vit Krejci. We talked a little bit about that this morning. He is like permac hard cap at 20 fantasy points. Um, I, I don't want to limit myself uh, in that particular fashion. So I congratulate him tonight on getting somewhere around 25 uh, just to stick it to me um, for that. Uh, apparently, um, Muhammad Gay and Muhammadu Gi. So, so we have we have a little a little uh, Hatfield and McCoy situation here, Greg. <laughs> there's a there's a showdown going on. <laughs> Listen, these guys should be forced to do a duel. They both, you know, they both draw their pistols. Whoever's the man standing is allowed to be in the NBA. The other guy has to go home. Your names are too similar. I'm sorry, but those are the rules, and I decided I make them right now. It's like uh, Danielle Marshall and Donnie Marshall, both playing for, what was it, Connecticut, way, way, way back in the day. Um, let's see, is Olenek playing? Yeah, as far, as far as we know, Olenek is playing. I hadn't seen anything that would indicate to me that he was even questionable. Uh, so let's double check. Yeah, I don't see the official injury report. Yeah, Olenek, Olenek should be playing. There's nothing that suggests he wouldn't be. Uh, yeah, he's not on the injury report. Jante Porter is out for personal reasons. Quickly is out for personal reasons. Jaco Pertle, of course, and Chris Boucher out for essentially the season. Uh, Scotty Barnes basically out for the season as well. RJ Barrett out for personal reasons. Uh, Gary Trent Jr. probable. He missed the. He's been dealing with the back issue. Oh, so that. Uh, do you we've have any had, interest uh, in Keon Ellis? We've, or we've we've had people asking us about like, hey, is is Gay going to start for the Toronto Raptors because Porter's out? But Porter doesn't start normally. But Porter never starts. So it, it, it well, actually, I should say he started a couple months ago, and they were in really weird rotations with him. But he hasn't been starting, so he he wouldn't start because Porter's out. Yes, uh, I see. Peter, um, no, not Peter. Uh, Devin uh, Neiman says, hey, what about Jalen Williams, both on the same team? W Williams, very common last name. Jalen, we're suddenly getting proliferation here. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, uh, no, sa same same deal. Yeah, and I, I think that these two have kind of settled it amongst themselves. Jalen with a Y, he's fallen out of the OKC rotation. I assume they're kicking him out of the league so that there's only going to be one Jalen Williams out there. But yeah, the, the real Jalen Williams, J-A-L-E-N, he's established himself as the Jalen Williams on OKC. Won't have to worry about the other guy anymore couple more questions that came into us in the Discord channel. We've got one here. Oh, here it was. Jefferson asked, am I unboosting the Boston guys? Yes. You just play this straight up now. You don't have to make any kind of reservations. Your lineup's zero things that we're waiting for on the injury report. Valentino then wants to know, what setting should he use for the $4 four-point play? Yes, for that, use the marquee setting. That's going to be your best option for that. 
And then Yaya Barros wants to know thoughts on Landale for a GPP. Yeah, so I understand why people are interested in him. Had a big game, played a bunch of minutes last time out. I was saying before that I don't envision him playing close to the same minutes. I think Jabari Smith Jr. won't get himself into such crazy foul trouble that he's only able to play 22 minutes. As far as Landale exposure, I have him in one out of 150 lineups. So not somebody I'm really all that interested in. Just one out of 150 lineups for me. Oh, were there any other super chats or anything that came through on YouTube, Mac? If not, we'll keep hitting on these Discord questions. Yeah, I think we can keep hitting on those. But I think uh, producer Mike's going to put up the greatest exotic lineup of all times uh, tonight uh, in on to play back there. So, I mean, there's there's no better time to play the exotics than in the last few weeks of the NBA season. This is their time to shine. Their it, time it to shine. Is. This is this is like the walk-ons getting run in yeah, the March. This, this is when tournament. the this is when the bench buddies make their way onto the court after sitting on the sidelines all year. This is the time. Yeah. Uh, Miami High Life wants to know good idea to X out the 7 p.m. games for more maneuverability later. So I didn't go out of my way to take the players out from the first couple of games. We'll see what my exposure is. All right. So from the Kings. I have two out of 150 lineups with Malik Monk. I have one out of 150 with De'Aaron Fox. Didn't have to manipulate anything. They just didn't show up in lineups. From Orlando, I am getting myself to some of Cole Anthony as a contrarian play. He is in a little bit over 20% of my lineups. He's the only guy on the entire either side of the first game of the slate that I have more than 10% exposure to. So I have a little bit of Cole Anthony, but... I don't think you have to just take the first game out entirely. Uh, it's just it's just naturally not going to be a priority. And then as a follow-up, we did get a question from Einstein who wants to know thoughts on Franz Wagner. Yeah, Wagner is in a couple of my lineups, but not somebody who I really like all that much. It's been hard to get to Franz Wagner as of late. We haven't really seen any kind of big price dip from him. And it's been very clear that Paulo Boncaro's much higher usage guy. And also Boncaro's assist rate being higher in the second half of the season. That's mean that Franz Wagner has played off the ball more hasn't played with the ball in his hands as much. And it just overall has had a negative impact on his fantasy production. So uh, Franz Wagner, not somebody I'm really getting to either. First game, sort of a write-off. I have a little bit of Cole Anthony there, but that's kind of it for me other than like a few guys who are in like one or two lineups. Yeah, and I would agree with that. And and for me, it's more of a function of just being on the show um, that I'm not doing it even if, if even i don't i'm not particularly fond of this matchup but th- there have been others that have been very easy to cross off but there are some you just you'd be insane to not play so again uh buying that extra news on a game where all of our we have all the news that we need plus everything is in that compressed all six games tipping off within 60 minutes of each other major difference um than it was even now last night was different because the only one but remember there were three 10 o'clock games last night so it was a very expansive slate so just know, just kind of know what you're doing um, when you do that. It's this is not one of those rules that's a great idea. It's applicable in the right situation. Let's see what else did we have in uh, Discord here. Jay Jay asked. Uh, oh, Jay said that he has uh, Kispert spelled Crispert. Also, uh, did I miss the context here? I feel like I'm missing context here on something. Yeah, but anyway, says he, he says that he has a uh, Kispert in his lineup. Uh, we've got another question here from Master PJ. He said uh, that he missed tears, wants to know the recap. Yeah, I'll go back to tears here. So, right, and then we've got two one... super chats after that, Greg. Okay, that I'll yeah, I'll get do, to I'll do tears I'll... really quick. Uh, yep. Tatum in tier one, Fox tier two, Kuzma tier three, Van Vliet tier four, Avdia tier five, Eamon Thompson tier six. What were those super chats, Emac? Who gets more minutes with Porter out? Uh, Jante Porter. Who gets more minutes just overall? Just overall for Porter. Yeah, or so I, I think once again, people just want to, it's it's like the, the Bart Simpson meme. Say it, say the, say the line, do it, say it again. Yeah, uh, so the player who I do expect to see the uh, biggest uptick in minutes is going to be Mohamedou Gay. I think he is going to play the the minutes that Porter was playing before. Now, it doesn't mean that he all of a sudden plays, you know, like uh, 30 minutes or anything like that. It's the Porter minutes, which are kind of in like the mid to high teens, but it, it puts him in play. Three minutes to go. Steve McGee says, who's your last guy in the utility slot? DK tournaments, 4,900 or less. 
uh, who is, let's assume what was, has, sorry, what was the price point? DK 4,900 or less. Let's assume he has Bruno Fernando. Okay. So last man in DK 4,900 or less. Uh, let's see. All right. Sort by salary. Okay. 4,900, 4,900 and under. So I can use the 4,900 price point. Agbaji. And I'll give him a second one as well. Because if you already have Ogbaji in your lineup, then Nuora. Yeah. yeah, Peyton Pritchard just missed that cutoff. I like I like Ogbaji. He was interesting. He does a he does a little bit of everything, which is perfect for this matchup against Washington. Um as long as Washington isn't playing lockdown defense. like. <laughs> and uh, by the way, Keith Wilson left us a super chat. It says, Gary Trent, no war. Yes, there's no actual question there, but I scrolled the YouTube chat to find him uh, throwing something else in there. But Gary Trent, uh, let's see, what's my final exposure on Gary Trent? Uh, I think it's a good contrarian play. We've got Trent projected for 13.5% ownership. I have him in 22.7% of my lineups. Gary Trent, there's a there's a lot of just overall playing time available for this Toronto Raptors team. Emac went over the injury reports at the top of the show, but we've got Barrett out, Pirtle's out, Porter's out now, Boucher's out, DJ Carton's out, which just matters in terms of it doesn't. Uh, but then Emmanuel quickly, Scotty Barnes, he's also out. So with all these players out for the Toronto Raptors, there's only a few established players they have active that they could go to. And I do think we're going to see over 30 minutes from Gary Trent in a plus matchup against the Washington Wizards. And Nobody's rostering. I'm only 13% ownership, so I'm about double the field on Gary Trent. No, yeah, that's that's definitely a good call. He can put up buckets in a hurry. Uh, just looking and see what else we have. No real overlay anywhere. Yahoo downsized their contest today compared to yesterday. Uh, we do have playback going on tonight. No playback yep. show, um, but uh, the games will be on. I'll kind of be keeping tabs on it. Greg, I'm sure, will be keeping tabs on it because Greg is everywhere at all times. I am, although I do have uh, – it is my sister-in-law's birthday party tonight, which it's – her birthday's in March, and as as a consequence of that, my brother and her do a birthday party for every single Saturday throughout the entire month. So <laughs> – I, I did have I did have somebody ask me when is her actual birthday. Like we celebrate it so frequently, it's kind of confusing to me, I, and I'm embarrassed to ask what the actual date is. So I do have uh, one of my brothers drove up from uh, med school, so he's staying over tonight. We've got a friend from high school coming over, so I don't know how active I'm going to be in playback tonight. I usually am in there hanging out with everybody, but I I do have other things going on today. But pretty low key, we're just going to be. Hanging out around my house, watching basketball games, probably watching. You know what you whatnot, should do, so. Greg? Go into her purse, look for her wallet, and, and check steal for her money. Yourself. <laughs> but make sure you don't get caught. Because <laughs> all right, no, I got you, and and you steal the money on the way out too, right? <laughs> Something like that. You get her a really nice gift that way. There you go. Yeah, it is. It is true. It's like it, it'll she'll she'll be like, hey, I had uh, fifty six dollars missing from my purse, and I'll I'm be like, like, hey, don't here's worry, a I got great a gift card. And I'll still have the price tag on it says fifty six dollars, <laughs> and maybe maybe two and two might be put together then. Perhaps, perhaps. All righty, we did it. We made it all the way to a lock. That is it. So uh, again, we'll get playback fired up. You guys can slide over there. Uh, Producer Mike has already dropped that link into chat, but we are 